Hey everybody, how are you? Mike Watson here from Watson's Models. Yes, Watson's Models, new channel. Um, I have a Watson's Wagons channel, which is all about the World War II Jeeps and trucks and things that I'm working on. But those are one one scale. And what I'm doing here is, as you can see behind me, playing around with 16 scale RC tanks. Uh, most of them are hang along tanks. Uh, there's one from Toro. I have a, uh, a tongue day. Okay. Centurion that I'm working on and I'll be doing a video on this one because, uh, it requires a lot of fit and finish and you ought to be doing some research on it before you put things together because the way that they have the instructions laid out, it's not accurate on everything. So, We'll do a separate video on that, but I just wanted to introduce myself, uh, Mike Watson, and I am a 56-year-old, almost retired dude. Um, spent some years in the military, and uh, just like everybody else, worked my tail off and raised some children and get them the hell out of here. So the kids are gone, and of course the hobby is picked back up, and you know, I've been doing this stuff since I was... Oh my gosh, since I was probably 10 or something. You know, grew up in Pontiac, Michigan, and we had a store called RC Hobbies just up the road on M59. And that's where I had my introduction to Tamiya kits. Um, they were the they were the standard back in those days. Um, and testers paints. <laughs> so you can imagine uh, you know being introduced to something you have never done it before. You get a nice Tamiya kit and you're blobbing on the enamel paints and you think you got a masterpiece and you know it looks like doo-doo but you know you do it and it felt good and I enjoyed it and I'm like man this kind of goes with my you know turning wrenches on vehicles so it's just a way to express my creative side and take a break from reality if you're like me um, I like my alone time and for me it's down here now I'll give you a quick tour of the of my little operating environment and show you what's going on um, but that's what you know that's what this is I am not an expert um, I have learned a lot of techniques and things from watching other people in their videos and uh, but I've come up with a couple of my own I have some really interesting ideas for this uh, uh, for the centurion so uh, stay tuned for that um, I have some ideas that I think might work, and if it does, it'll set the RC environment on fire. <laughs> so, anyhow, let me uh, let me flip the camera around and kind of give you a, a tour of what I'm dealing with here. So to start things off, uh, this is my my work area. Um, I have more paints than I think I will ever use. I don't know. You know, I got a lot of this stuff uh, from a gentleman. Um, I don't know, it was from an estate kind of deal. And so most of these came from an estate sale. Um, about half of these Tamiya paints did. And I could tell you in the last year, I have used this red and that orange and probably this German gray. The rest of it's been sitting there. So, but it mixes up still. Started building my, uh, my uh, you know, model color, Vallejo acrylics. And that just keeps growing along with different tools, you know, different paint brushes, files, things like that. Got me a little airbrush thing in the corner here, vents out to the window if I'm using noxious chemicals. And uh, I certainly don't want to breathe it. But uh, my main interest is armor 35th scale and you can see here i have you know these sort of sorted out by you know the soviet union um there's some japanese stuff there some israeli stuff here's sort of my odds and ends aircraft i grew up doing aircraft but i prefer armor a little bit of a mess back here but we have some more kits I've got the uh, the Fan Home Diagostini 
a Millennium Falcon parts coming every month, so I'm just stockpiling that until I'm ready to start it. I really love the 16th scale tanks, and so I do have some of those kits. Here are some of my older tanks uh, from the early days of Hang Along, which I've done some painting and updating to. These are newer tanks, the Soviet vehicles. Here's an original hang along that I got that I did my own paint job, shadowing, things like that too. Uh, also painted up their figures. Same thing with the Sherman. Okay, Snow Leopard. I haven't touched these guys yet. I haven't even put on the accessories. These are all the 7.0. So they do have scale speed with the exception of this one. This is an older one. But uh, I learned some lessons along the way when I was starting to paint on these. And <clears throat> what I didn't realize back in the day when I got these tanks is that Hang Along provides you with numbers, right? And they want you to put them on the turret. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that kind of looks legit. Uh, negative Ghost Rider, that is the part number of the tank. Uh, that 3888 matches up with the instructions down here. So once I realized that, I started removing those decals using a little bit of hair dryer, heat, and a razor, and they come off, clean the area up, touch up paint as needed. Some of the other things I've been trying to do is figure out which Vallejo paint matches the original uh, colors that were used by Hang Along. So it's kind of iffy. Uh, these may get repainted. I do enjoy getting these tanks and doing a lot of the shadow work, using panel liner from Tamiya, doing some dry brushing, you know, where the rubber isn't painted, paint them, work on the weapon systems, you know, uh, and just try to add a couple of extra small details that look a little bit more realistic. That's sort of the goal. Um, on this side here, got another leopard and you can see where I've done some dry brushing and some weathering on it. I don't like my stuff to look like it had been in the field for a freaking month, mud and crap all over it. I just kind of want a nice motor pool look, you know? It's clean, but it's not perfect. Challenger, this is our recent acquisition this year. Uh, did a lot of paint work on here for the, you know, the bubble lights and the, the fire extinguishers. I still need to work on the tow cable, but um, you know, same thing with the weapons. Painting the ammo cans, painting the weapons. I don't like the scale look of the 50 that mounts up here. It looks too large, so I didn't put it on. Okay, but when this stuff is done, I clear coat them. Haven't touched the Abrams yet. That's what I actually did in the Army. I was an Abrams tank crewman, so that'll be fun. Here's a Toro kit. All right, we got the KV-1, and you can see where I did some work to it. Some streaking and grime. KV-2, this is the one I worked on recently. Took the tracks off, took it out in the garage, and spray painted it with red oxide primer. Um, and then came in and did a wash on it. Uh, worked on exposing some metal. So I'm still working on this one, little bits at a time. And we'll get doing, you know, some rusting and things like that. A little bit of chipping. All right, there's a saw in there. I like how this uh, panther turned out. Did my own hand-painted work on the turret. And, of course, you know, this vehicle, everything comes the same color. You got wood blocks in here. You need to paint them so they look like wood blocks. So... Yeah, I enjoy painting all the, uh, what, what do they call it in Star Wars? Some uh, models, little greeblies. <laughs> Merkaba. This is a fun one to detail up. Actually, I misspoke. This is the 50 cal I was talking about, not the Challenger. This one here, it just doesn't look, it looks too large. So I got to do some research. <clears throat> and moving down here, it's one of my original Tigers. Uh, which got, uh, I completely repainted this one. And it's got a damaged gun in it. <laughs> but, you know, did some track work. and I still have some more weathering to do. And I have the uh, 
the grates that go over these. And so we'll work on those one day. Here's my very, very first hang along RC that I got from my family. And you can see where I have stripped it down, uh, removed all the decals, and this will be getting the Watson treatment as well. So, yeah. And I forgot to mention that the KV-1, also I've repainted the entire thing because it comes in a real light minty color and I did not like that and it didn't seem accurate. So I darkened it up with Russian green and used some US olive drab for some of the darker highlights. But uh, anyhow, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of Andy Hobby Headquarters. So I've been grabbing all of his releases and there's a, uh, there's a whole bunch here that came from Andy's 16th scale armor. And then I just keep an eye out for deals. These I love kits are kind of cool. This is a new release. Here's one I had from before. Trumpeter Abrams. We'll get to that one day. I got some six scale vehicles as well. Here's some, here's some uh, vehicles I'm working on for some friends. Uh, this one here is a combination with a, a 3D printed dump to mimic my friend Tim's truck. It, it looked identical. I'm just waiting on decals to come in so we can customize it. Got a Mighty Might here. Daryl uh, Bensinger owns his Mighty Mites. We've got a second one we're doing diorama that I built for a friend of mine that I served with in Desert Storm and uh, we were with 48 Cav 3rd Armored Division he was the commander for an M88 and so we've got a little maintenance scene going on here with a couple of folks observing I do like the 1-6 scale stuff there's a real nice Panzer II that I've been working on over the last freaking 10 years or so and uh, I just put the camo pattern on it this year, ordered the decals um, off of eBay. I can't remember if that was Paddington House or whatever, but yeah, very, you gotta be very careful with those decals, especially that size. So we still have some weathering to do, but that one's really cool. I also like to work on toys uh, if I get a chance. Now, I haven't done anything to this TIE Fighter, but I did get this X-Wing. And I definitely had to update the paint job on that and get that thing looking a little bit more weathered. So that's always fun to play with actual toys to, you know, get them to look a little bit more realistic. Still not professional, but it's a good 10 footer. What else can I show you? I do have some, some ships that we'll get to eventually couple more RC vehicles 200 scale Missouri Arizona Curtis Wilbur and these cabinets are full of you know combination of Panda Tamiya Academy TACOM you name it uh, these are all smaller kits that go down through here so so that's it I didn't collect this stuff immediately it took years to build up my uh, my little hobby environment. And, you know, a guy's gotta have something to do in retirement. And retirement's coming. But I gotta keep my brain sharp. We gotta keep creating new neurological pathways in there. And the way I do it is by working on these vehicles. So, I hope you stay tuned. Keep an eye out for upcoming videos. Um, I may do some test drives and stuff out in the yard but I think for now, I'm just going to kind of show you the work that I'm doing and how I made changes on things like this. Okay. These are fun. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And, uh, you know, don't worry. I'm not going to be on long diatribes like this for every video. Um, I'll never come across as an expert. And everybody is welcome. So please, I hope. You hit subscribe, 
and I don't know what direction that subscribe button is, but it's somewhere. And, uh, you know, stay tuned. We're going to do our best.